um, I'm going to share with you um, some of my story and the reason I'm sharing it is first of all because I love you all and I want you to know what we're doing but also so that you guys can see how God has been in this from the very beginning and I didn't always see it as that sometimes I have to look back and see that God was working um, through all of this but um, a week from today we will be arriving in Honduras, uh, me, Ken, and Jack, and on Monday, a week from tomorrow, we'll have Santos, we'll have temporary permanent, temporary sole custody of him, so we'll have him Monday to the following Monday. He'll be staying with us at a really nice Marriott Hotel in the capital city of Honduras. Please continue to pray for us. He doesn't speak English, and we speak about that much Spanish. Um, we have tools and stuff, uh, flashcards and picture dictionaries and stuff to help us, um, but please pray for us with that. I'm counting, no pressure, Jack. I'm counting heavily on Jack to help through this time because I figure little boys can play without the need of language. Um, Jack will be an example to Santos to, to be calm, to feel comfortable, you know, he's going to be, I'm just so proud of this boy. He's, the fact that Jack was adopted, when Santos understands that, that should make him feel um, safe with us. So, um, okay. Um, typically when you adopt from Honduras, it's a little different than what we ended up going through because Santos has undergone some, I can't look at you, just so you know, would you stop crying or hide your face or something? <laughs> um, Santos has undergone more loss than, um, than we can even imagine and understand. The long and the short of his story is when he was two years old, he had a, has a brother who is four and a brother who is six. And their, his birth mother, for whatever reason, dropped him off at the orphanage, never released him, just said, I'll come back for him. So she never came back for him, and eventually they were made uh, wards of the state and adoptable. Now, Santos and his two brothers were only half-siblings. His brothers had a different father. But to Santos, at two, three or four, that means nothing. So when Santos was seven, his brothers were nine and 11, and they were adopted away from him into a family in Atlanta. He, he lived with those boys, took care of him. They did everything together. They shared a bed. I mean, that's how things roll in an orphanage. And when they took his brothers away from him, he spiraled out of control. He lost it. It was, in his words, the, the worst, the saddest day of his life. His biggest hope is that He's adopted by a family in the U.S. so he can have a relationship with his brothers. His biggest fear is that his brothers won't remember him. But of course, when they were adopted, he was seven, they were nine and 11, so they'll remember him. So I'm gonna ask that you pray for the parents of the two brothers in Atlanta because I will be reaching out to them in hopes that Santos and Jack can have some kind of a relationship with them. And I think that's going to go a long way with healing Santos is to be able to do that. Pray for wisdom for me because I don't know what the best way to do that is. And I'm going to have to talk to a psychologist to figure all this out. I don't want Santos to see our family as a means to his brothers. I need him to bond with us before you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, so I need wisdom for that. So... Uh, Typically, the child in Honduras, when you're adopting them, they know all about us at the same time that we learn about them. But Santos was different because he was very broken. Um, his spirit is very broken. He's, he's a troubled little boy. The good news is he's broken hearted and we can fix a broken heart. It would be much worse if he had detachment issues or was shut down and incapable of feeling love and compassion. So as cruel as it sounds, it's actually good that he's brokenhearted because we can love on him and fix that. Um, so Santos does not know about us yet because 
the psychologist wanted us to get this laundry list of issues that he has and make sure that we could handle it before he got his hopes up and then we changed our mind, you know, whatever. Um, so the good news is he's strong, um, healthy, good eater, on par, coordinated, you know, um, a, a average student doesn't like to do homework, what nine-year-old boy does. Um, <laughs> um, you know, the bad news is he has some anger issues. He's scared to death to, to be alone. Um, he can lash out when he's scared or, or frustrated or, you know, he's just, he's a mess. Um, but I have to stop saying he's a mess. He's damaged, but we can fix that. And God is already working in his life. So. Okay, cool story. One of the stories I was going to tell you. So we get this laundry list of things that are wrong with him, his issues. And again, nothing that was scary. Just he's a broken-hearted little boy. But one of the things it said was um, that when he, um, it, that he, he tends to go to a safe place and he has a, a overactive imagination and he lies and the lie that he tells people is for the past year and a half or whatever he will tell anybody and everybody that a family is coming for him this weekend they're coming for me this weekend they're going to come and get me and get me out of here they're going to come and get me and then you know the people the caregivers have to tell him Santos nobody's coming for you this weekend he keeps saying it and to them it's an obsession. It's a, a brokenness in Santos. And when I read about that, I was like, ooh, okay, that's kind of scary. But we can fix that with love. I know we can fix that with love. When I slept on it and thought about it the next day, praise God, it was totally an answer to prayer. So think about this. Um, July of 2014, his brothers were adopted away from him. October of 2014, we, we signed the first paperwork for the adoption. And my church family, our prayer group, and my mom's in prayer from that day on, and so many other people were praying for us. And the biggest prayer that I heard was, prepare the child's heart for us. Prepare the child's heart for a new family. So I know for a fact that God is preparing his heart. And as much as a nine-year-old is capable of understanding the fact that he is telling people, family's coming for me this weekend, that's God preparing his heart for us. So he's ready for us. He doesn't know about us yet, but, uh, but he is ready for us. So um, we, Ken and I, agreed, now that we understood the issues, we, on a Thursday, Thursday? I think Thursday, we, we agreed and, you know, committed. And yes, we went very badly to bring this child home with us. And one of the things that, so the, the psychologist and the social worker will be meeting with Santos this coming Tuesday to tell him about us and to show him the home study and all the pictures and this whole history and this write up on my past and Ken's past and Jack and so he'll get a better picture of everything. One of the things they asked for us to do was to write letters to accompany it. And do you guys want to hear at least Jack's letter? Yeah. Because it was amazing. I need my phone. No, the phone, please. Um, I mean, I'll read them both if you care, but um, <clears throat> you want to hear them both or just Jack's? Jack's is cuter than mine, but Jack's cuter than I am. <sighs> so proud of this boy. This one is amazing. Okay, my hands are shaking. It was, it was a surprisingly hard letter for me to write. I like I wrote it. 10 times and at first I sounded like I was too hard and then I was too soft and you know and, and then I had to remember it's a nine-year-old little boy and so it was a very difficult letter but um, I'm hoping that he he receives what I'm trying to say so we wrote <clears throat> dear Santos we are so excited to meet you and to welcome you into our family 
You are in our thoughts all the time, and we are praying for you daily. We love you so much already and cannot wait to bring you home so we can all be together as your new family. Within our, fam within our family, we love and protect one another. We show kindness and encourage one another, and I promise we will protect you and keep you safe. I know that you're going to be the perfect addition to our family and you will make us complete. We love to laugh and sometimes act silly. We have a lot of fun together. You can do sports such as baseball, soccer, tennis, and golf. We will teach you everything you need to know and let you try different things to see what you like best. We also look forward to you teaching us all about the things that you like so we can enjoy them too. You are so special, and we know that God picked you to be the perfect child for our family. Oh, what did I do? And Santos, if you're feeling a little scared or nervous, please don't. This is going to be great, and we will figure it out together. You are not alone. We will always be with you. And when we meet you for the first time, I hope it's okay with you if we give you great big hugs and kisses. All of our love, Mom, Dad, and Jack. So Jack, it didn't help me write the letter, but I read the letter to him when it was done. And my sweet boy wanted to write his own letter. And a uh, little backstory on this. Santo's hero is Luke Skywalker. He loves Star Wars. His hero is Luke Skywalker. So the only thing in this letter that I helped Jack with was the, some of the, the way he structured the Star Wars sentence wasn't as clear, but truly every other bit of it he wrote. Do you want to read it? Okay. Dear Santos, I'm very happy you're going to live with us. When we meet you, I will bring the Star Wars video game and all the Star Wars movies for us to watch together. I cannot wait to see you. I know that you are the older brother, but I will always help protect and teach you the stuff you will need to know. We also have a dog. Her name is Bella. May God bless you, Santos. Your brother, Jack. P.S. I love you very much. Um, <clears throat> so. Does anybody have any questions, I guess? Can I, no? I don't really have questions, but I've got two comments. As I started singing today, God gave me a picture. And the first picture was the plane going down there. To don't say going down, because it's the no. second most dangerous airport to land in. Okay. It's flying south. It's protected. It's surrounded by angels. Praise God. The second time, the second one he gave me was a picture of the three of you standing in like a semicircle and two angels leading Santos into your circle and closing it behind. Hmm. Definitely. I received that. Yeah, definitely God has this. Oh, and God has this. are going to be with you. In yeah. And it means so, so much to me. I love every single one of you so much. And you've been such a support and encouragement. And let me vent and complain and encourage me. And let me remember, vent and complain and encourage me. Do you remember that first night sitting at Bible study mm -hmm. saying, please pray for me. I need wisdom. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you just did that again. Pray for wisdom. Yeah. You don't need it's wisdom. It's a good story. You have it. It's well. Faith. What Debbie was talking about was I kept saying this when we were trying to decide if we were going to adopt, and I kept saying, anybody who listened to me, I'm like, pray, pray for me that I need wisdom to make this decision. And this is why I know God has been in this in, and in everything um, from the very beginning. So I have everybody praying for wisdom for me. And FYI, I still have none, but what I have. So that day I was driving to work, and um, I pulled in to get a coffee, and the line was backed up. So it was a sunny day in, in October of 14, and I turned around and parked facing the sun, and the sun felt good, and it was quiet in the car, and I started praying. And as 
it was as much of an audible voice. It wasn't audible, but it was as real, as close to audible as I've ever experienced, was God saying to me, you don't need wisdom. You need faith. You take a step, and I will meet you. You take a step, and I will meet you. Um, and that has certainly been exactly what has happened because I have no wisdom. Um, you know, we're adopting a, a child that is going to no doubt be a tremendous blessing um, to us and to him, but it's not going to be without its challenges. And again, counting on God, we're just going to take a step and he's going to meet us. Step and he's going to meet us. So if I know when I look out here, everybody has their struggles. Everybody has their thing. Everybody is broken somehow, something. Um, and unfortunately, God doesn't always answer every single prayer we have the way we want it answered. But he does hear us, and if we have faith, he will meet us and help us and carry us for the next step, for the next step. And that's really, that was what I wanted to encourage you all with this morning. And, and kids, I know it's a beautiful day, but I would love it if you would take like 10 minutes to write a letter to Santos that you would take with you, right? If, if you want to, and then I'll have it translated into Spanish so he can read it. And take your picture, maybe I'll get the pictures going. Absolutely, yeah. So can see it, so if you can, like, wait to play outside for like 10 minutes. I've got some paper and you can write him a, a letter so he can get to know you before he's even here. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. You're up, boss. Yeah, you get to continue. Yeah. 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 Yeah